Am I, do I have the globe? I assume yes. Click and see if it okay. works, Tracy. Click, click on your slide. Is it, are, you, are you able to click? Yep. Oh, yeah. Perfect. All right. Okay. So we're ready. Let's go back. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited. Tracy and I really, really prepared a great presentation. This is all for you. We know these are challenging times, but we want to make sure you know we are here for you at any time. My name is Marie Ceruso. I'm the National Open Court Literacy Specialist, and you can reach me at marisa.russo at mhaeducation.com. I probably have an answer for you, and so does Tracy. We've been teaching Open Court. I personally have taught it since the 1989 copyright. I taught it in inner city LA, and I've had a lot of experience with it. You know, the instructional routines have remained the same. So if, you, if there's any questions you may have, please reach out to us. Hello, everyone. Tracy Schuler. Um, as Marisa said, I could probably throw my hat in. I've been teaching it uh, since teaching and working with it since the early 90s. Um, and you can reach me, Tracy Schuler, at mheducation.com. We have our email address there. We also, um, in the background, DJ West, National Professional Learning Director. He is helping us out. Um, we have our fingers crossed to all things technical that we can um, hear everyone. And if we don't get to a chat question, it's in the box. We'll be sure to, to reach out um, or you can email us, as I said. Just connecting to audio up there in the top box, you can choose to either dial in um, or join with your computer's audio. We just asked. Um, that we're not going to, um, that you mute yourself when you come on. If you're not already muted, it helps with the background noise and all of that, uh, that extra stuff. And we're not going to um, have annotations, but we will have the recording and we'll be able to send that out to you. So um, notice in the corner there, Leo, he's our special guest today. Um, he is all set with his headset. He's ready, our social emotional companion for K and one, but lately uh, he's been a pretty good guy in helping us get all things ready, ready for you guys for today. So let's kick it off. Marisa, if you want to go ahead and let us know what we're gonna talk about today. Yes, let's look at today's goals. We have a lot to cover, but we are I'm telling you, we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna look at the technical support that's available for all of you. Um, it, it, in fact, we're going to look at some tech FAQs, an 800 number. We're going to look at the COVID support. Uh, we have awesome, an awesome site set up for both educators and for parents. We are going to talk about some online professional development that's available for you in different areas. Sometimes when, I, when I've done the training, people are like, where are these things? So we're going to be specific on where to find online professional development. So you have PD in your PJs. And these are awesome. These are just Awesome videos that you can you can view. If, for example, you, how did how did Maurice or Tracy read a decodable? I, I need a reminder. Sometimes when you read a routine, it's not as memorable as when you see a teacher deliver it. So you could you have all that at your fingertips. We're also going to look at online teacher resources for both the core English language arts block K5 foundational skills for K3, and we know there are a lot of foundational skills educators out there, and word analysis support for grades four and five, okay? So we are gonna cover all those. We're gonna spend a lot of time, a lot of time on assigning digital resources to students. We're gonna look at how easy it is, different ways of doing it, and some shortcuts. I don't know about you, but shortcuts are really important to me. I, I, it really makes a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. we're, um, we're gonna look at what students are able to do on their side how they view the assignments, how they respond to those assignments, how they can record anything I assign. Trace is gonna be dyno, dynamic at this one. We're <laughs> also going to quickly review because we know you can't do it all. We've talked about this. Trace and I planned this out and we're like, yes, they can't do it. it was, who, you know, 90 minute block, 120 minute block. We know that's not, not really possible at this time. So we're gonna really focus on the key instructional routines to keep in mind when it comes to open court reading. And just a reminder that there are diverse learners out there. 
So we are going to end with some differentiation tips and some differentiation routines and strategies to help our, our, the diverse learners. So get ready, everybody. I also want to remind you to take a picture of the screen. Please do that, everybody. I'm going to give you a moment. This is such an important <coughs> screen. It's the technical support link and the 800 number. This link, okay, will give you system requirements, tech FAQs, COVID-19 support sites, for educators and parents, by the way, password help, password reset, simplified login, and the 800 number, I would put it in your phone. Both Tracy and I have this in our phone. This is how important it is. So just keep these things in mind. Um, it, they're here for you at any time, okay? Yes. <clears throat> Speaking of um, response to COVID-19, as things have changed, this is a great uh, web address to remember, mheducation.com forward slash pre-K dash 12. If you go on the site, um, the two things that you need to remember right there, remote learning for schools, this is going to be aimed uh, at our teachers. So if I am a teacher, remote learning for schools, I'm going to click on that and all of my updated, um, so you'll have videos that I've made, Marisa made, some of our um, uh, some of our teammates, it's up to date. So it might be that I checked it last week and then there's something new on there. Plus there's some great resources. Um, we're not the only teachers. Our parents are teachers too. So when we're thinking about, and I clicked on that a little quick, so at home learning. So if we think of at home learning, that is for our parents. So our at, at home learning is gonna give all of our resources from a parent's perspective. So they're not going to have the login for the digital teacher site. Um, so they're just going to see what their, their child sees. So um, it, it will be from that perspective. And we have to support our parents too because they are, um, they are our secondary teachers. They're teaching from home as well. So remote learning for schools for teachers and then at home learning for all, um, mheducation.com forward slash pre-K 12. That'll give you lots of, of information in addition to our digital. Marisa? Awesome, Tracy. We're going to have, we're, we're assuming some things for today, okay? We are assuming, open court educators, that you and your students have accounts on Connect Ed. Okay, we're going to visit those accounts a little, a little later. I'm going to go as a teacher. Tracy's going to go in as a student. Some things will look familiar. Maybe some things will be new. We are going to assume that you have assigned the grade level content to students. And if you've done your planner, you've set your planner up for the year. Maybe it was in August, maybe it was September. Everything is, and you put all your, all your pupil free days, all your holidays. It's all synced and the student and the teacher match. Okay, so if I'm on unit five, day one, lesson one, so is my student. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna make sure that works. And we will review all online features today. All the features that, that Open Court has, both for FSK, Word Analysis Kits, and the core ELA K-5. And finally, I kind of mentioned this earlier, we know you can't do it all. We realize that. But we're, we're going to focus in on what's the most important. And we know what the most important thing is. Remember the National Reading Palace from a long time ago? Remember the five essential areas of reading? Let's at least, at least, the minimum we can do is cover those five essential areas. Raise your hand if you remember. Raise your hand. Let me see that hand. I know you remember. But let's 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 shout it out. Phonemic awareness, <laughs> phonics, fluency, vocabulary, comprehension. Let's at least cover those five essential areas. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Tracy. All right. Um, before we get into the digital, just a quick reminder on YouTube: uh, Monday mornings with Marisa. And then we have Carol's classroom. So if you get on YouTube, you Google Monday mornings with Marisa, you Google Carol's classroom, um, three to five minute professional development, mock classroom setup, but still covering our important routines, um, procedures, everything that we need to know as, um, as educators. Gosh, what does that big book look like? If I was going to read a story, what are the things that I, I really need to hit with my, my students? Um, maybe I'm talking about sound-by-sound -sound blending. I'm doing a Zoom 
uh, lesson and I want to really hit those routines. So Monday mornings with Marisa grades K through three and then Carol's classroom for a four or five. Um, and don't worry if you're just foundational skills or word analysis kits. Uh, although it will talk about all parts of the lesson, there's pieces in there for all teachers and, and all aspects of how we're implementing open court. Um, all right, best kept secret right here, opencourtonline.com forward slash PD. You don't need a password, uh, no username or password. This is our, I, I would say, you'd think it was hidden. Um, I, I watch these videos and have been watching these videos. I, I love them. They are a great resource. Kindergarten through fifth grade um, covers the green band, foundational skills, word analysis kit, red band, comprehension, um, and vocabulary, and then the, and then you also have inquiry and investigation. So if that's maybe a piece you want to see a little bit more of if you're implementing the core, um, and then of course uh, the blue band, grammar, usage of mechanics, writing, actual teaching examples. So if you want to see it live in action, sort of live, um, you can see classroom teachers implementing the program. And I think, again, here there's a little bit of, of everything, something for everyone in here. Even if you're only teaching foundational skills or you're teaching word analysis kits, these are great teaching strategies, um, great routines that can be implemented uh, across any classroom. Would you agree, Marisa? Absolutely. I, I, could I also add what I love of the best is that it covers every step of the inquiry process. So if you want to see mm -hmm. how the teacher kicks off the concept question board, how they kick, kick off how to, how to formulate a conjecture, the, every step of the writing process is all there every step of the way. So if you want step-by-step -step information, it's there for you, every grade level, which I love. All right. Are we ready to go live? I'm ready. Okay, Let Marisa, me. I am going to pass it to you. Thank you. Okay, everybody, I'm going to go in as a teacher. Are you guys ready for some fun stuff? This is the fun part. Okay, I'm going to make, create some assignments, look at my classroom. Did you share it, Tracy? I did share you. Did you not receive? Hold on. No, I haven't received it yet. Hold on. There you go. No Thank you. Awesome. It was that virtual it. globe throwing across the country. Can you see my uh, online thing? <laughs> I can see it, yes. Okay. Um, everybody, I just want you to know this looks a little bit overwhelming. This is my book bag, but please remember that it's, I have all the So, Marisa? Because, yes. One quick comment. Um, one of your boxes is open on your screen, kind of in the top corner above where it says Ohio. Oh, So, if okay. you could drag wow. that. Yeah, if you could just drag it over the side. Uh-oh, what did I just do? Oh, You're okay. Still good. Got, got, got it. Yeah, that better? that's better. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for letting me know. Um, okay, everybody. So you see, I have a book bag full of things because this, this is my demo account. So I have every single open court program, student and teacher. So you're not going to have all this. Okay, just just a quick reminder. See that help button? I, I'm I'm right here at that help. That's where you can go to find. Remember what we talked about earlier? system requirements, tech FAQs, COVID-19 support, uh, password health and setup and simplified logins, and the 800 number just with this help. So I just want to quickly show you, um, I'm, I have a lots and lots of assignments set up in grade two. So I'm going to go ahead and go to grade two, my teacher's edition, and I want to show you what that looks like because that's where we, we made most of my assignments and most of my um, recordings. Okay, everybody, immediately when you go on, you will see that my lesson is ready to go. I'm unified lesson five, day two, but look at this. I can go back at any time and do a review of anything I want. Do you see my six units? Let's say I want to go back to unit one, lesson one, day two. You know why I'm going back to this? I remember vividly that some of my EL students have trouble with CH versus SH. I remember vividly a couple weeks ago, they had trouble with differentiating CH and SH. So now I can open up my blade and look what I have, my 
decodable story chip. Do you see that? So I can click on it and we can reread, the, the, my EL group can reread that. So that's what I love about how easy it is to handle the, um, the open court lesson plan right here. So let's go back to our unit, unit five, lesson one, day one. This is, our, this is our day, but I just want to quickly, since we're on the core, do you see green band, red band, blue band? This is the core lesson, correct? Foundational skills, reading and responding, and my language arts and grammar, correct? But for some of you may not have the core, right? So let's go back and see what the difference is. I just want you to see the navigation is exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and go to foundational skills. Look at foundational skills, grade one. Look at the navigation. You have everything I just showed you except for that red and blue band. So you still have that navigation. You can still go and search for a different lesson quickly, a different unit and a different day. You still have the e-presentation and you still have the exact same menu I'm gonna be working with when it comes to the core. I just want you to see with word analysis kits, everybody, let's go to grade four, word analysis, look at exact same look. So the, navig the navigation continues um, the same way. So now let's quickly go back to my grade two, because that's where all my assignments are, and I really want you to see all of the features that we have. Okay, so here's what I like about this. It's already, it's already set to go. Okay, my lesson is set to go because I already have it populated, right? I set my lesson planner on August 26th, and I populated it. I can just, if I want to, click on this e-presentation and deliver it. Look at the delivery, everybody. Here it is. Here's my unit opener. My unit five unit opener is, is my citizenship unit. I can just, here my, here's my arrow. I can just click each slide, right? What makes a good citizen is my big idea. Here are some discussion starters with my theme connection, sorry, it's a little slow. My theme connection, right? Why does living in, the, what, does, what does living in the United States mean to you? I can go to my awesome background builder, everybody. Remember, we have a background builder for every unit, every grade level. And then, of course, the sound spelling card. We can listen to the sound spelling card, okay? So I can do it that way, or if you prefer. Now, what's nice about this is that each blade I can open up, and let's say I don't want to go in that order. I want to, I want to start with the coding. I can open up my blade here, see the blade? And I can just start with decoding and, and, re, and reinforcing the uh sound for foot. So you can do e-presentation style or blade by blade, okay? So I also want to remind you that, sorry, this little bar here. Oops. You can also go in and, and always remember that you can open up your EL support and your intervention support at all times. So let me show you what I mean by that. When I'm on my lesson, and I, let's say I'm gonna give you an example on developing oral language. I'm gonna open this blade up, okay? And we have, look at what we have for decoding words, right? Now let's say I would like some support, more additional support because I just can't think of sentences off the top of my head or I can't think of definitions off the top of my head. Look what happens when I open up my EL guide, which is purple, and my intervention guide. Do you see that? Now watch what happens to my decoding information. Look at this, everybody. I received, as a teacher, additional support for developing oral language. Let's, let's look and see what all the support I received as a teacher. Do you see that? Additional, additional EL support, additional intervention support. It is such a beautiful, I think sometimes people forget about how awesome this is, all this information that you receive. For example, even if you have a, a Spanish student, you have definitions in Spanish. If you want to look up, how do, you, how do you say the word look in Spanish, mirad? How do you say the word book in Spanish, libro? So you have that when you, when you access these awesome little tools. Okay, so don't forget the EL support and the intervention support can be turned off and on. All right? Now, let's quickly look at what we have in our menu. I want you to remember the, the most important places, okay? First of all, the planner. Okay, write that down, the planner. We're also going to, this is a very important place, class management, the resource library, assignment tracker, 
professional learning. So right now I'm going to go to the planner. Remember I, I, I told you I set it up on August 26th? Here is the beauty of this. I can see every single week all of my lessons, weekly view and monthly view. Okay, so weekly view, monthly view. I can delete at any time. I can print at any time. I can go back to a previous month. I can move forward. Does that make sense, everybody? But here is what I love, and Tracy and I really think this is so cool. You can, any, at any time, go to th these little arrows and immediately go to your access your lesson. Let me, let, me go, let me go to it quickly. And there's your lesson pops up automatically. You can also, this is the best, you guys. See the lesson details? I'm going to go to the monthly view. That's my favorite view. The monthly view has lesson details every single day. Watch what you can do immediately. So today, my lesson details. I get all of my lesson information. Do you see that? Anytime I want, I can just click on any single material. I can look at my standards. I can look at my object, uh, objectives. And I have links to all my, 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 my materials. I can see what routines am I doing today. What skills practice pages am I doing today? What's the intervention guide support today? But look at this. Home connection. What home connection letters go out? I have home connection letters in English. I have home connection letters in Spanish. Look what happens when I click on the home connection, everybody. This is such a gift for, for at home. You have everything you need to support parents and students for home. The big idea, this week's reading selection. This is the best, everybody, all the vocabulary for this particular week. The spelling words for the week, the language arts, and the grammar, okay? Now, I want to just quickly go back and show you this feature in Spanish. You saw the English. Look at the exact same information in Espanol. So they have that, they have that in Spanish and English every single week, every grade level, by the way, okay? All programs. Another feature that's very nice here is when you go to the cog wheel right here, you can, as a teacher, say, oh, you know what, this is a non-teaching day for me. So what happens when I click on it's a non-teaching day, it moves it over for the next day. So let's click on it. This is my non-teaching day. It'll move it over to the 31st. Let's see. Oops. See, it, moved, it, moved, it made it a no lesson, and it moved everything over to tomorrow. But I want to go back and go, oh, no, 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 I changed my mind. It is a teaching day. It comes back. Okay, so click on the wheel, and you have it. You can change it to te teaching day or non-teaching day, and it moves it over for you. And you, and you can go. You can do the whole week. If it's a whole week, and say non-teaching day, not, and it moves it over for you. Okay, so that's one thing I wanted to show you with the planner. It's ready. It's all ready to go, and your lesson and the students' lessons will match. Now, let's Marisa, go if I, yeah. Marisa, can I just pause you right there, just to yeah. re, just to remind teachers that when you first set up your planner, you can put in all of your school holidays. So it will populate, so it's not, you don't have to do your holidays every single day when you set up your planner. What Marisa is showing you here is like in times that we have now, all of a sudden we have an unexpected non-teaching day um, or we have a makeup day that was originally set as a non-teaching day. So when you first set up your planner, you can put your whole calendar in with your school's planned uh, days off. And then this will, um, a point of use, really quick on, on teaching or off teaching. All right. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks, Tracy. So that, that planner is easy and ready to go. Now look at class management. I really want to take you here because this makes, this makes so much sense when you're, at, when you're in the classroom. So I have my list of all my students. You see that, right? But I also made groups. So I just want to quickly show you that. I made groups. I made an EL group, I made a gifted group, and I made an intervention group. So when I assign things now, I can sign it four different ways. I can sign whole class, I can sign by group, I can sign by three ways, and, and individual. Okay? Now here's the greatest thing, everybody. I can at any time create a new class. I can edit. These are my edit, edit, and these are my delete. But I can create a new group. So let's say I, I do have an ELL group one. But let's say I want an ELL group two, because my group one are my, um, are my newcomers. I can just quickly get in here, put an ELL group two, and assign, I think it was Jose and it was Jenny. 
they were my ELL group two. They're more intermediate. So here's my EL, and I save it, and there I have an, a, an additional group. So now I have an ELL group two as well as an ELL group one. So you can do this at, at any time, which, which makes, it, makes it so much easier. Um, I, another thing I want to show you is my assignment because Tracy is going to be one of my students that I assign things to. So let's take a look at how this works. Okay, so I have created several assignments here. I really want to. I really want to be clear on why I did this. There are different. There are different things that I, I, I ask students to do. Let's look at read and record decodable 38 and review vocabulary. I assigned it to the whole class. Do you see that? Let's click on it and let me tell you what's unique about this. I have assigned audio recorder to be on. Do you see that? Yes. I can always go in here and edit it and say no, but I do want this on because I want them to read and record Decodable 38, the boat show. I want them to review long O words and find all the long O words in the boat show Decodable. I would like them to write two sentences using the high frequency words that are in that book, when, could, or there. And I'd like them to record a sentence using the new vocabulary word that you see as citizen, and that's found in the first selection of, the, of Unit 5, and the story is called A Brand New American Family. Okay? So I've assigned this to the entire class. Do you see that? No, no one has submitted their assignment yet. But I just wanted you to see that particular assignment. And now when we go back, I want to show you an, another assignment for the whole class. That's the same one, is no recording. This one here is for everybody too, but no, re no, recorded ne no recording necessary, do you see? Because now I just want them to listen to the vocabulary word nod, reread the, our selection, a brand new American family, write down a sentence where nod is found in that particular story, and then read about prepositions in the language arts handbook and here are all my students listed so that's just two different one one with recorder one without recorder but do you see how detailed my instructions are now now take a look at a special lesson for one particular student my intensive intervention student ryan i want you to see what i did for ryan letter p and q he is confusing letter p and letter Q, formation. So I, I assigned him penmanship models. Do you see that? And look at here, just for Ryan. I'm going to edit this right now. And actually, I would like for him to also review the word citizen. So I'm going to watch this, watch this, watch how easy this is, everybody. The word citizen, right? I'm going to work, I'm going to do a citizen search, citizen is our vocabulary word. There it is, you see that, everybody? I'm gonna add, see that word add? I'm gonna add it to Ryan. Let's see if it shows, there it is. I added it to Ryan. Who, is, who am I sending this to? All students, my one that's already selected, which was Ryan, my intervention, my ELL1, my ELL2, or my gifted. I just want it for Ryan, see, just Ryan. So I'm gonna save it. And just Ryan gets to do what? Review P and Q. Uh, penmanship and review that citizen word. So I'm going to save it. All right. So let's take a look if it if it shows up. And there it is. There. This is what he'll see. I also have something else from Ryan that I want to show you. This is very important, everybody. Ryan, I know for a fact Ryan sent me a recording. Do you see that? He submitted it. See, this is zero zero submitted zero submitted zero. But look at Ryan on this. I wanted him to reread chip. Remember that decodable that students struggled with I mentioned earlier? They struggled with CHs versus SHs. So he sent me his recording. So let's take a look at what he submitted to me. Okay, everybody, here it is. Do you see? I can view his recording right here at the bottom. It's highlighted now. It's colored. When, when, they, when they haven't submitted, this is, this, is, this is not colored in. So let's take a look at what Ryan submitted to me. Here we go. Submitted. Let's see if Ryan's recording went through. Chips by Chester Shipley. Can you hear it? Illustrated by yep. Stephen Perfect. Awesome. 
Now, everybody, look what Ryan wrote back to me because I gave Ryan an assignment. I said, read, record, shift, and write down five words that you find in your selection with a CH. So look what he said. Ms. Russo, I read shift to my dad two times. My recording is completed, and I found five words. And here they are, chip, chin, chunk, chair, and chase. Is that awesome? So did he complete it? Yes. So once I, once I hit yes and I save it, it's done. If, he, if I feel like he didn't complete it, there's more, I can also send it back and say, you know what, Brian, find me two more words with CH. But I think that's fine. He, he did a beautiful job. Let's see. He did his assignment, correct? And I also want to share you, with you another assignment. Do you see for, for read vocabulary words? I, want, I just want you to review what I did here. I gave these three vocabulary words to my EL students. Do you see it? So Jenny, Jose, and Josh have, have this. So I, you can do it, like I said, to individual students. You can do it to a whole class, and you can do it to a group, your assignment. So here's review my, the vocabulary words. Number two, let me know how, how, who listened to you read each one and write three sentences using the new vocabulary words. Okay, so I, I, my, my recorder is off. It's nothing that they need to do, okay? Now let's go back to the other awesome features, everybody. Profe I wanna Marisa, quickly talk yes. Marisa, I wanna, um, I wanna just quickly toss in that you can share, when you, when you create an assignment and you share Resources you can share to your Google Classroom. Oh, do, I was going to do that with the resource library, but thank okay, you. Okay, perfect. So you can create yeah. an assignment this way. Thanks, Tracy. You can create an assignment this way through going through your assignment tracker. So let's say I want to create a new assignment. Let's say review, review, oh, my goodness, foot card, right? The sound spelling card. Do I want the recorder on? Sure. I want them to review it. When, do, when should it start? Let's start it today. Let's end it uh, on the 30th and expires on the, on the, on the 7th. So let's, let's say, please record yourself. Please record yourself reading the sound for foot. Okay, and then look what happens here. I'm going to search for foot. The foot card is uh, right? And here it is. Add it. And I'm going to do it for all students and save it. Does that make sense, everybody? Just always go to add, and you can always, like, like uh, Tracy said, share it with Google Classroom as well. Okay, and I'm going to save it. Thanks, Tracy. There's another option is to go to your resource library, which is so handy, everybody. This is an awesome tool. Every resource, every resource is by, by every grade level, every resource you need to teach is here at point of use immediately. Every vocabulary word, every practice decodable, every sound spelling card, every uh, EL, EL photo library, all there. And like Tracy said earlier, you can go in and but with this wheel, you can attach it as, as a um, homework piece, for example, and, and create an assignment, or you can definitely share it with Google Classroom. You can also make it a favorite. I love doing this, making it a favorite, a favorite, and that way, and you can put a little note for yourself, and that way you have it in your favorites. I have a few things in my favorites already. This decodable book is really important because it's the first time they see CDC words, and my phonemic awareness lessons are my favorites as well, and I put little notes on it, in it to, to remind me who read it already. So when you go to the resource library, everybody, I, sometimes it, can, it, may look, it may look overwhelming. So let me show you a trick that, I, that uh, Tracy and I both both love, okay? So when you, for example, when you're going to the sound, all the sound spelling cards are right here, am I right? All of them. And you want to, let's say you want to go to zipper. You have to kind of keep going and going and going. But the search, this search bar right here in the corner allows you to immediately go to anything that you want to just quickly access. So for example, I want to, I want to uh, look for zipper card because that's a hard sound for some of our Spanish speakers, correct? So zipper says the sound z. I'm going to put zipper in there. I search, and here my zipper card pops up. Do you see that? 
and I can definitely play it immediately. Is that great? Or? Uh, zipper. Awesome. Zach's jacket has a big, long zipper. The zipper zips like this. Uh, <laughs> when little Zach uh, goes out to play, zipper. he zips okay. the zipper up this way. Now, uh, I could also later when the search for again, another Zach one, bird. Again. Uh, okay. Can you help Zach zip his jacket zipper? <laughs> We're zipping. I know. Bird card, okay? The bird card pops up for the er. Let's say you want to get all the long vowels. Long vowels. Just put it in your search. Long vowels. To review the long vowels, look what happens. All my long vowels pop up. And here they are. A-E-I-O-U. Look at long E. Remember, long E has a lot of spellings. That's a, that's a good one to review. What's second on up. But the biggest gift of all, everybody, is for second through fifth grade teachers, raise your hand if you're second through fifth grade, the, you know, kindergarten and first grade, they do the, those phonemic awareness and phonological awareness lessons beautifully and daily. So they master them, correct? Do you, is it possible that you have students in second through fifth grade that do not know how to segment sounds orally, do not know anything about phoneme blending? So if you need that, sometimes, sometimes we may forget about this. You can search for phonemic awareness lessons for second through fifth grade, okay, only. So all you have to do is put phonemic in the search bar and watch what will, will come up, everybody. This is such a gift for your students. Look at all 30 phonemic awareness lessons pop up for you, 30, okay? You can deliver them at any time. They can be printed. You can print them out, you can save them to your desktop, but it's important that you understand that these are available to you because the students deserve it, everybody. What, when, you, when, you, when you get to the root of the problem, the root of the problem is what? When students can't decode, when students can't spell. It's a phonemic awareness issue, okay? So just, just keep that in mind. And one last thing I wanna cover is that professional learning. Sometimes we forget we have this awesome resource down here. Please remember, everybody, this hamburger menu, Click on it, go to professional learning, and you will see that you have both. Uh -huh. You have both teacher and administrator site. You want to go to the teacher and look what will pop up for you. It's such an awesome reminder. You will have teaching instructional routine site where, where every single grade level specific routine is reinforced. You will have interactive classroom set up if you, if you want an idea of how to set up your classroom. But the most important part is we have classroom videos of teachers teaching the program all across the United States. So if you want to see a teacher teaching how to blend words, if you want to see a teacher te how to introduce a sound spelling card, you want to see a teacher doing phonemic McCord, everything at your fingertips, everybody, especially something like a decodable story. Sometimes people forget the routine. You can immediately go and watch teachers teach the decodable story in their classroom with students. This can be small group instruction. This can be whole group instruction. But at, le at, least, at least you have that at your, finger, at your fingertips, okay? So I hope this was beneficial to you. And now Tracy's going to go in and see all the assignments I gave for Miss Jenny, right, Tracy? Absolutely. I'm Jenny now. Okay, Miss Jenny. Hey, Marisa. Yeah. I have one question in the chat box, and you may have already done it or are going to be touched on it, but it said, can you show how students can complete worksheets online and save? Oh, that, that's a great question. The worksheets online, it's just for practice. It's not for them to um, save and, and, and give back to teacher. It's just for them to use as, as a practice tool at home. You know what I'm saying? It's not, it's not something that, yeah. that can be delivered back to teacher, assigned back to teacher, but thank Got you it. for that. That's a great, great question. All right. Can you see my screen? Totally. All right. <clears throat> I am Jenny, so I logged in as Jenny. So when I log in, as you can see, um, this is exactly where Marisa was, Unit 5, Lesson 1, Day 1. So my lesson will be what my, what my class lesson was, what, the, what your unit um, what your unit is, where your daily planner is. If you look here in the upper left-hand corner, you'll also notice 
uh, here. You'll also notice that the students have a menu, much like teachers do. A few, a few less options, um, but none less powerful. So what I'd like for us to look at um, first is my to-do list. So when I log in as Jenny today, um, Unit 5, Lesson 1, Day 1 is where I'm at. So without even any lessons being, or, or materials being assigned, I have today's materials that, that belong with the lesson. So I'll have the oof card, the foot card um, that I could listen to. I also have skills practice pages um, once, once I do the lesson. We also have access to the Language Arts Handbook. So and I'm going to click into that and we're going to look at the Language Arts Handbook a little bit because it's a great resource for our kids second through fifth grade have access to that. But what I want you to look at down here, this is what I have assigned to me. Oh my gosh, I have a lot going on. So the difference, uh, what you saw Marisa do, so I'm going to start with the decodable stories. So she assigned the decodable story. And remember when she showed you where she turned the audio recorder on? So this is now what it looks like for me. Now I, whatever activities I do, I have the option for recording. Who is this going to benefit? Um, well, number one, if I've got kindergartners or first graders who aren't able to, to type, um, they can send me their response so I could they could be listening to a story and then respond to um, a collaborative conversation question. Maybe I've got some ELs that um, aren't able to, to type and where writing is, is a problem. So I, I have that option. Read and record decodable book number 38. That's what Marisa, uh, Ms. Russo told me to do. So I have that right here. So if I clicked into it, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to go to the first story, and let's just say that Marisa, Ms. Russo didn't tell me what story I was on. Over here in the left-hand corner, I see my menu. I'm going to the boat show because that's my story today. So before I read, if you notice up here in the left corner, you have the record feature. So students can record up to eight minutes. So if they were reading, so I'm going to press record, if they were reading their story, Hope's home is Oak Cove. Once they finished reading, they could read this whole story. Um, they're going to come up here and they're going to click finish. And then look at the options that they have here. They can now they can listen to their recording. And maybe once they listen to it, and I'll I'll let you know. Uh, that's a great feature for kids to let to listen to their own recording. If they like it, they can attach that lesson, that recording. If they're not really happy with their reading, they can redo it. So let's just say Jenny is excited about her reading and she wants to attach that. So it goes back here, back to the assignment. So now I have that recording right down here and I can attach that to my lesson. Um, I'm going to review long O words. I'm going to write a sentence with um, my high frequency word. So maybe I go down here and I say, um, my brother likes when I read to him. So all of my assignments, I can comment here and I can record the decodable story. And even up here when I have record a sentence using our new vocabulary word citizen, here's my recording feature. It looks the same. So if I click into this card, there's my recording feature right there so that I can actually record. I wanted to record myself working with this card and then I finish and I can attach it. It sends me right back into my assignment. Once I'm done with my assignment, I can turn in my assignment. Now my assignment's gone. Notice that. I don't have a decodable story. Um, if I clicked here in the past, I could see it over here because that's what I've already turned in. This is what I have to do. So those were the audio recordings. She also showed you where she didn't assign the audio. She just had them um, reading and listening. So I've got Nod, the visual vocabulary that I can listen to. All the visual vocabulary is auditory for my students. Um, and then your, 
your anthology. You could open up the anthology. We're going to a brand new American family. Let me show you something. So here again, we've got um, a brand new American family. If we go right over here to um, a brand new American family, it takes me right to my story. I have my essential question that she already went over. And then I can start right here. I see my vocabulary word. If your vocabulary words are highlighted, then they're auditory for your students. So they can listen to the story. They can also click on here and find um, and listen to those, those vocabulary words. I'm going to close that out. Now, here's where I'm real excited, the language arts handbook. So I had to do something on prep prepositions. Now, Ms. Russo is pretty good about giving me the page number but I can pretend that maybe she didn't. Um, over here again, I know that prepositions is in section five, so I could come down here to section five and find uh, prepositions and click on it. I could find it that way, or I could just enter the page. It's really simple and easy for students to access, and much like the anthology, um, everything is auditory for them, so they can listen to these pages being read to them. So all of the assignments show up here on my to-do list. Once I'm done, they'll disappear once I submit them. That is in your to-do, and here is your resources. For all students, this is what the pages look like. They have videos and songs. Um, they'll have cards, some spelling cards. They'll have um, the photo library cards. The core decodables, Marisa was talking about, I think um, oftentimes teachers forget K, one, two, three, you have a whole set of practice decodables. So students can interact with these core decodables. You have another set of decodables here that they can listen to and interact with. Um, the eBooks, so you've got your language arts handbook and your anthology. Everyone likes to play games. Um, I'm going to go to my favorite game, Robot Roundup. So if I went to my favorite game and this was assigned to me today, well, I kind of like, I like this game, so I'm going to actually star it as one of my favorites. Um, here, activities. This is just, um, again, activities that are focused on phonics, grammar usage and mechanics, and writing. But I want to go back to my game that I starred. So I put a green star on it, and now it's going to show up in my favorites list. So even if Ms. Russo didn't assign me uh, Robot Roundup today, uh, it's in my favorites list, so I can always go to it. So that, the resources, my work that I'm doing, I can upload work. So there again, if I took a picture or a screenshot of something, I can upload my work, my resources, all of the student resources, um, and anything that is not here, the teacher can always assign down here. So even if I didn't have access to it as a student, um, the teacher on the teacher side can use that cogwheel and, and give me an assignment. So though, that's, the, that's the student version, and so this is what your parents will be looking at. Marisa, was there anything else we wanted to share? No, thank you. Before we you, switch out of here. You, you did a beautiful job with what the students can see and what they can submit and what they can listen to. So I love that idea. All right, so what we're gonna jump to now is head back here. Can you still see my So while you're doing that, Tracy, I'm gonna ask yeah. you guys this question. Do you recommend having students use open court to use the text tool and fill out worksheets to return to students through open court? It's kind of similar to the last question, isn't it? The worksheets are more practice. Yeah, the, work, the, the worksheet cannot be sent back unless they take a screenshot, but they're not, they're not designed to be um, sent back. They're just designed for, for practice. Got it, thanks. Th thank you. Um, can you show, could you show on assignment where to click to submit it? Oh, yes. Tracy, can you go back? Uh, we, we Hold on just a your, second. We, we, can't, we can't see your, your screen yet, honey. Sorry. All right. I'm going back to – hold on just a second. Here. There you go. So can you, can you see it here? Totally. All right. Yeah. So if I, if I go into Nod 
and I found right here, it says um, reread selection one, a brand new family, find my vocabulary word. So if I go in and I finished my reading, here it is. She gnawed on a toasted sesame bagel. So when I actually go back to my assignment, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to say um, she gnawed on a toasted sesame bagel. All right. Yeah. You're making and me hungry. <laughs> I, was, I, was thinking that. I was thinking that too. Right. So if I am just posting, if I'm just posting a comment, all I'll have to do right here is post that comment. And now my teacher sees that. If I'm actually doing something, um, much like we were doing when we had the recording, if I make a recording right here, then then I go into the, then I would actually submit that down here. So if I go back here, you can kind of see where that submit button, turn in assignment. So that's what I would click when I have to turn in that assignment. So if I'm done with all of this, I've, I've posted my comments, you know, I can click turn in my assignment, and now look, Nod is gone because everything that I did in that assignment has been turned in. And so now, Marisa, when Ms. Russo logs in, she'll actually see my turned in work. Yay. All right. So now I'm going to jump back in. You see this right now, right, Marisa? I sure do. Just a reminder, okay. everybody, grades two to five, I just want to remind you, you, your phonemic awareness lessons are going to be found in that search bar. Put in phonemic awareness, and remember that our goal is to make sure they can do some phoneme blending and some oral segmentation. So the last 10 of those 30 lessons are critical. So just a reminder, why are we doing this, everybody? Because they have to know how to segment or they can never be spellers for life. We know that for a right. fact. If they can't, if they can't segment, judge, and think of the three sounds they hear. Sorry, I, I, I should be on camera. If they can't um, segment, judge, and think of it, judge, and think of those three sounds. How are they going to be able to ever spell judge ing or judge meant or judge mental? You're you're creating lifelong spellers when the students know how to do that phoneme segmentation, and we know that from all the standards. Look at kindergarten standards and it'll tell you at the they must know how to segment three to five phonemes by the end of kindergarten, okay? So we don't know if that's been, you know, completely done when we were in second through fifth. So let's take a look at an example of what we can do at home quickly. You can do you can count with fingers, you can count with buttons, you can count, you know, just just by 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 snapping. So let's do it guys. Ready? How many sounds are in catch? Count with Miss Russo. How many sounds do you hear in catch? Ready? Go. Ah. How many sounds did you hear in catch, guys? Three. Awesome. Three. So this is a phone, and you see no spelling. I, I show no spelling. As soon as you show spelling, ladies and gentlemen, it's a phonics lesson. Right now it's phonemic. Why do I do phoneme first? Because that's the way language works. Sorry, everybody. That's the way every language that's alphabetic works that way. Phoneme first, and then you learn the graph. Or how, how do people call it? Sound symbol or speech to print. That's how all languages work that use the Roman alphabet. Okay, so let's do the word snatch. Ready, guys? How many sounds are in snatch, boys and girls? Let's go. Mm -hmm. How many sounds do you hear? So do you see that every single sound has a box? Never put a box for every letter. You put a box for every sound. This is the research of Louisa Most, and I'm telling you, as a, as, a, as a first grade teacher, this was critical for me. So why are we doing this? To set them up for success for spelling, everybody. Because what, have you guys seen the sounds and sequence dictation? Just a reminder, what do we do? Word, sentence, word. Okay, step by step of the way. You guys, we're going to spell the word luck. What word? Luck. Let me give you a sentence. Ms. Russo hopes and prays that all of you have good luck today on your spelling test. Yay. First sound. Ooh, let's Ooh. take a look at the sound spelling card. How do you spell it? L. L. Excellent. Good. Vowel sound and luck. Ah, uh, good. Uh, what's, our, what's, what's our spelling on, on the sub card? 
you. you. What color is our you for tugs? What color? Gotta remember that tugs? that green. It's a green background. What does green mean, boys and girls? Do you remember? Short vowel. Short so vowel. Last sound, last sound in luck. What do we see on the camera card? How many spellings do we have for? We have three spellings, but only one of them has that green box. What is it, everybody, at the end of luck? CK. CK is after a short vowel in English. Isn't that awesome? So no need to guess, right? That's what I love so much about Open Court. There's no need to guess. These are, we have some facts for you, okay? So let's right. take a look at how we transition to helping students become speller for life. So now we know that every phoneme has to have a grapheme, speech to print or sound to symbol. Let's spell pack. Ready, guys? First sound in pack. Spell sound in pack. Ah. Last sound in pack. So, so, so everybody on there on the call, please just don't say what letter do you use. You're not going to say what letter are you, are you using. You're going to say what spelling is it. Because if you spell phone and the kids say the first sound in phone is you can't say what letter are we going to use. You're going to say what? What spelling are we going to use for the first sound in phone? Because PH is a spelling, not a letter. Okay, everybody? So let's do switch. First sound in switch. How do you spell it? S. Vowel, I mean, next sound in switch. How do you spell mm -hmm. everybody? W. w. Vowel sound in switch. I. How do you spell I? And I. I. And last sound in switch. You see what I'm saying? What spelling do we use? at the end of switch. TCH, how do we know that? Because TCH is after a short vowel in the English language. It's another rule, right? These are all rules that are done by grade one. For those of you who are wondering, when are, when are these rules completed? Every single phonetic rule of the English language is a first grade uh, teaching, first grade learning, totally, okay? So uh, one other thing I wanna remind you is our differentiation. I, I mentioned the EL support guides and the intervention guides. Please remember that you can locate those at any time. Remember, go to the resource library and just, and just open up the uh, EL support guide or open up the intervention guide. But remember that there are special routines to help students, especially our ELs. Why am I showing you this, everybody? Our ELs and some of our actually, actually even our English-only students struggle with vowel patterns. Do you know that? English has the most vowel spellings of any alphabetic language, okay? How many vowel sounds are in English? 20. Do you have any, you have any spellings? Look at just for long A, look how many spellings just for one sound. Long E has about eight spellings for the sound E, okay? Every other language, when you think about it, every other language for the sound E uses an I, right? Like amigo, they use an I. Merci, they use an I. Kimchi, they use an I for E. We have eight spellings for the sound E. So I would love for you to remember this is an, a critical routine that sometimes we forget about, and it's called vowel first blending. You front load the vowel pattern, okay? I don't care what vowel pattern it is, front load it. Boys and girls, we're gonna talk about the sound A today. What sound? A. A. How do we spell A today? Ms. Russell's gonna spell it A blank E. What spelling of A are we using today? Everybody repeat. A blank E. Let's go. E. Sound. A. A. Sound. A. One more A. time, Tracy. Sound and sound. Okay, A. you guys. We have the sound A. How are we spelling it today? A blank A blank E. e. Let's start blending. Let's go, Tracy. Let's go. May. Good, mm -hmm. Good job, guys. Tay. Good job. Shay. Excellent. And Shay. Oh, good, boys and girls. Now we're going to finish the words. Let's go to word number one. Blend and hold. Make. make word make. Let's go. Blend and hold. Tape. Tape. Word. word. Awesome. Say it fast. You know what I'm saying. You don't want kids to read that way, do you? Remember model fluency, guys. You don't. You don't. You don't want to just accept tape. What do you want to accept? Tape. Okay, everybody. Model fluency. This is an awesome Zoom lesson, everybody. Zoom. I can't even tell, I just did this, I honestly did this last week with a cousin, my cousin's little girl, because she was struggling with so many vowels. Okay, blend and hold, chase, words, chase, chase. and finally, let's blend the last one, shape, shape. Yes. word, shape. shape. So once, once we have this skill down, okay, everybody think about how learning is supposed to take place. Once the skill is down, what was the skill? To decode these, correct? 
to read them fluently, correct? Now go back and let's build sentences. Don't chop up learning. Don't blend sentence. Blend sentence. It's too much. Finish one skill, blending, then go back and build sentences with these, okay? You have an awesome, awesome opportunity there to do a quick little mini lesson. It takes five minutes of your time to really make a difference, everybody. All right, Tracy, thank you, hon. All right. So to wrap us up, we've got a couple more things. I just want to remind you, um, and we, we saw where these were in the student section. So when we think about songs, the alphabet song, the alphabet cheer, the alphabet rap, the alphabet song, um, our parents, our parents are doing some teaching at home. We don't want our kiddos coming back in the fall um, with the new letter, Elemena, and the Y and Z. <laughs> so reminding our parents, just teaching them how to, because everything we do in open court is purposeful. So singing that alphabet song and giving them some options, um, all of these are in K and 1, so the parents can hear them and the kids will remember them from class. And this is just a quick visual under the resource library at how many songs and rhythm and rhyme options that you have, especially in kindergarten. So those are great resources for our parents. And one last thing, one thing that we can remember when reading, this is any book, any book with our kids, um, we need to make sure our parents can, can read these books with our students and know that interaction piece. We want to remind them before your before your child starts a, a story, have them look through it, have them read the title, um, maybe talk about what they think it's going to be about, um, make some predictions and guesses, as parents might say. Um, and then the, the most important thing is for them to read it silently first, and then they can read it out loud, either to their mom or dad or their brother. Uh, reading it silently first, uh, it allows the, the student, it allows the child to really apply those skills, build the confidence, and then they're ready to read it out loud to them. They're going to come across words they don't know, just to remind them to sound them out um, in terminology that our parents, the parents aren't going to understand how to blend, blend and hold, but things that, they, that they'll understand. Sound it out, and if they don't know it, just tell them. They're going to repeat this for every page, and then, this is the most important part, and sometimes I think re reading the decodables may be a part that we miss. Um, this is where text evidence starts in predictable, manageable text. So when your child is uh, talking about the story, when you're actually getting that interaction, maybe doing a Zoom lesson, have them find where the answers are, pointed in text, not just the picture, but, but find that answer in text. Now, I try to apply this. Um, because I'm not only working, but I'm also a mother to, to boys who are doing school at home. Um, and when everything else goes a little crazy on the outside, uh, and I tell this to, I have uh, some girlfriends with some young, young children. If you do nothing else, if you do nothing else with your kids, just read a book. All else can be technical issues, everything, all of that can happen if you're just reading stories with your with your kids, um, I'd say that's a win for the day. So one last, take a picture. If you don't remember, um, I'm going to show you my email address and Marisa's email address, but ask an SSG consultant at nheducation.com. You can send any question, any, do you do this, or, or maybe can I have a copy of this? If not, um, pretty pretty much immediately within 24 hours, we'll get back to you um, and let you know um, what, or send you the information that you need. So ask an SSG consultant at mheducation.com, or you can email Marisa or myself, tracy.schuler at mheducation.com. We really appreciate your time today, and we know that what you're doing out there is making a difference for the kids, um, and we really want that's what we want. We want you to go away with at least one thing that's going to help you um, reach the kids because that's why we're here. Marisa? Everybody, thank you. Gracias. I, it was so much fun to connect, to see some familiar faces in the chat. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for participating. And email hey, us because we can two, give you, honestly, we have such great tips. So if there's ever anything couple you last need, questions. A couple yeah. last questions. Okay. For some reason, our students do not launch at the same point at which our calendar is set up. 
Can we override it or correct that remotely? Or is that a tech question? That's a great question, and it would be a tech for sure. Okay, so that phone number that Marisa gave you earlier is the one you wanted. You want to let follow me, up? Let me. Re I'll repeat it. 800-437-3715. Yeah. 800-437-3715. Right. Great. Put that in your phone. It's awesome. I, I have it. And I, in I the next. Sorry. And in the next 24 hours, we'll send out the recording to this, and feel free to share it with your colleagues. Hey, thanks, Thank ladies. You, Thank All you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hey, bye, guys.